how much of our will determines whether those things happen or not. For example, if I want certain things in my life, but I am a believer in manifestation and visualization and allowing things to come and the right things will come, how much do I need to do to assist the manifestation of these things? Because, you know, we could all hope for a million dollars. I want a million dollars and I'm, I know I'm going to get the million dollars. I always say you have to do the work too, but maybe there's something else that I don't know. Well, it, the, the only thing you don't know is that the program that says, uh, how, how likely is it that you will make a million dollars? And all of a sudden you go, well, from the world experiences, it's like, it's going to be really hard, very difficult to do this and probably never going to happen and all that. And I say, oh my God, you just canceled your intention based on a program of belief that you see in the world. You know, it's interesting because the same topic about money, uh, there's a book called uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Yep. Uh, and what does it talk about? It says, if you got programmed in a poor family, then your program is no matter what you do, you're going to be poor. In contrast, if you get programmed in a rich family, even if you're unconscious, because you see, consciousness had nothing to do with it, it had to do with the program, you can stay rich even if you're stupid <laughs> because program is not coming from your conscious mind. It's coming from the subconscious program you've got in your family. So rich people tend to stay rich. Poor people tend to stay, you know, tend to stay poor. It's not because of their intention. It's because of the foundational programming. So if we change the programming that opens up any future vision to be a completely different vision than the one that you have with the existing program. Mm -hmm.